Hello, Lobster Road here. <laughs> I don't even know if you can see me, but it doesn't matter because this isn't about me. This is about us. This is about all of us. And I am here reporting to you on day two from Lost of O, another beautiful day here. And so I'm gonna let you see that instead of my mug. Let's go. Do 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 do. Yay, it's another sunset. <laughs> Here I am sitting on my balcony. There's some um offerings over there in the corner for my bird friends and the sun is setting behind the hills over there. Let's just look at the sky for a second. Take a breath. Oh, there's the sea. Amazing view of the sea. And then here, here's the cove where I'm staying at. And this is what I get to look at every day. And I just feel so inspired and so joyous. And I wanted to share a taste of that with you. So we could all like take a few deep breaths and breathe in the purifying salt air. And as you exhale, imagine yourself laying back and resting on the waves as they gently lap towards the shore and inhaling the purifying air ah breeze is coming and exhaling and resting back a little ah when we do this i feel like we rest back a little into our true nature puns intended <laughs> our spiritual true nature and the nature of which we are born from and which we are absolutely 100% interconnected to. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. And first, before I do that, I want to tell you a little story. So you can see right now I'm pointing this at this little tiny island that is right outside my window. The part of Lasava where I'm staying is called Zaklopatitsa. And this island right here is appropriately named Zaklopatitsa, just like this neighborhood. <laughs> so this is the very small island of Zaklopatitsa. And Angela, my host here, told me this story that it's been weighing on me, so I'm gonna share it with you. So this island is the home of these puffin birds that are unique only to this place, to Lostovo, and I believe to this island right here. It's very tiny, as you can see, um, but they're unique to this part of the world, and this is the only place that you can find them. And so this thing started happening where there were these rats, like ship rats, that came somehow, like human, you know, interference right brought them here to this part of the world and then they somehow made it onto that island and they started to eat the eggs of the puffins the puffins also let me just say the puffins on this island um i mean they do everything here but um when they're mating they make this like crazy noise it sounds kind of like strangling feral cats or something. I don't know. It's like this crazy wow wow I can't even do it noise. But anyway, it's amazing. Uh so were those birds and their eggs were being eaten by the ship rats. So, you know, the people found out that this was happening somehow and were like, this is a problem. Um so I know what we'll do is we'll go onto the island and we'll take these traps and we'll go and we'll catch these rats and then they won't, you know, like eat the puffin eggs anymore sounds reasonable, right? Except what ended up happening is that the people went onto that island and freaked the birds out. So yeah, the rats are gone because they caught them in traps, but so are the birds. You cannot hear any feral cat-like bird creatures, can you? Nope, I just hear that car. <laughs> and the wind because uh, they're not really there anymore so Angela told me that they used to be there all the time like even during the season and um, they left and they haven't come back and she said I hadn't heard them since 
so then I was heartbroken, like utterly heartbroken. Like we just like devastated an ecosystem you know, like with our brilliant ideas as humans. And, um, and I walked around actually over to there, right there is a bus stop and near that bus stop is a sign and the sign's talking about like the uh, bird project. There's like three types of birds that they're wanting to really, you know, like help preserve. And the project, um, they got two, almost two million euros for this project. So I just want to also say, <laughs> like, there's lots of money given to this project, which then they decided to go on the island to get rid of the rats. And now the birds are totally gone. So the reason I'm telling you this story, I've been heartbroken. Okay, so wait, here's the end of it, is that basically was heartbroken and then it sent me into this spiral, you know, about how we, ha we can have the best intentions and really want to help and sometimes we go and do things and not only does it not help, but it actually causes more harm, right? So let me know if you're with me because, you know, as someone whose intention is to make the world a better place, you know, change the world, make a difference, create more harmony, more peace. It's hard to always know what to do, right? So I've basically been praying um, and, and doing this other work. So this is what I want to tell you about. I'm going to sit here and we can watch the sunset together. Well, I tell you what I've been doing about the puffin situation and everything. All right, so I wonder if I could put this down in a way where I'm like, I don't know, whatever, I'm going to hold it. <laughs> so what have I been doing? Ah, so I am um, being here. I was really reminded of this project that I started in 2015 called Fields of Decay with my brilliant collaborator, Leah Shelton. She's from Australia. And if you don't know her, um, you should, <laughs> or if you happen to hear of a show called Bitch on Heat um, in your near city near you, I would say run and go see it because she's doing this crazy ass feminist patriarchy smashing high octane performance work. Uh, it's brilliant. And that's what it's called. Bitch on bitch Heat. Bitch on Heat. Um, she also works with her company Polytoxic and they do really innovative and uh, incredible um, multimedia performance works and experiences. So she's brilliant and her and I collaborated back in 2015 um, because we were really concerned. We worked on a piece together in New York City about Earth and and really we had a lot of conversations and just bonded a lot over the climate crisis that's going on, you know, like, and what's happening to our planet. And it's like beyond the point where it's even arguable that like this thing is in crisis. Um, we don't know how long we have or which way it's going to go. And it could go either way. Um, but for sure, if we don't have some kind of conscious intention and co-creation as to what's happening, it's surely going to go like towards the apocalyptic end. Um, which is fine for the planet. Um, but if you're concerned about humanity, uh, we don't stand a chance then. <laughs> so anyway, in doing this work, we went out into the fields, uh, sites of environmental decay and destruction. And we did this in Australia. We got amazing support. So my phone's freaking out. I'm trying to be shut down by the system. I totally know it. <laughs> And now the rain clouds are rolling in too. But anyway, I'll try to be brief. So Lee and I went out into these fields, these sites of environmental decay and destruction, and we were testing the energy and we wanted to see the impact that the energy of these places had on humans and then the impact of humans energy on these places. And so we got tremendous support from the Australian government and different arts organizations. It was amazing. And we went and did this work and we wanted to translate it so that people could come and experience the energies of these different places so they could have a visceral experience of what the energy is like and that that would help develop a kind of environmental empathy, right? A different understanding of these places versus just the intellectual. So that was the basis for that project and we did it in very scientific ways. We went and interviewed a bunch of 
scientists of different disciplines to understand what is energy and how we can measure it and how we can relate to it. And then also we did it artistically and we put on lab coats and we went around and we rolled around in these places like old toxic dumping sites and we used different ways of measuring it, um, many of which the technological ones failed us, but the uh, intuitive and emotional and physical and aesthetic ones did not fail us. So art is, I believe, part of the answer and I will get to that soon. But my whole point is that, you know, part of the problem, part of the reason that we do things that we think are going to help, right? They're well-intentioned. We think they're going to help, but then they actually don't is because we're not taking in the whole of the interconnectedness and we're not completely knowing like what each thing that happens, how like the laws of cause and effect are real. And so, you know, like what happens when I do this, then this happens and then this happens and this happens and this, and we don't just don't, I mean, I don't know that we're capable of thinking in that way, but that doesn't mean that we're not capable of knowing in that way. So what the heck do I mean by that? <laughs> well, I do believe that there are ways that we can actually access the intelligence of our interconnectedness through these different practices and it does take practice and it does take training because actually most of the world is set up to train us in the exact opposite way it's to distract us and to numb us and to uh keep us from accessing the whole of that information like here's the thing we're steeped in this in societies uh, we are part of what is the industrial growth society right now, which um, I've also... So I don't know where I was when the darkness rolled in and tried to stop me from finishing my transmission, but I know where I am now, which is this beautiful place. Uh, it's the new moon and I just rebaptized myself naked in this cove here. <laughs> with all of my new intentions, including what I wanted to express, what I want to be, what I want to embody, and what I want to share with the world about our interconnectedness and really developing this new way of being that's needed right now. We need to connect and we need to connect with our bodies and we need to connect with each other and we need to connect with the planet and we need to connect with our divine selves, like the universe, all of it, in order to really come up with solutions, in order to really behave in ways that consider and integrate the whole of the planet. Because if we don't, this beautiful, beautiful place, beings, all of it, including us, is gone. So I believe I was talking about fields of decay and I've been doing that work here now, going to different sites on the island that are really impacted by trash, even though this place is a park of nature and it's so pristine and um, well tended to, there's still like trash that's washing in from countries that seem like far away that wouldn't even impact this place. Um, but because of where it's situated and because of the winds, all of this trash washes up. And we went to this site yesterday that was like um, like this. It was a cove, and it looked like, though like there was sand on the ground. So I was walking across this kind of like river, this indentation of sand. It was decomposed styrofoam mixed with dirt, and when I stepped on it, I fell in like up to my knees, and it was the grossest feeling to feel all those little kernels of styrofoam like in my shoe. I don't think I could ever. So I don't even know what you can see now, but I will not be stopped. That's for sure. You might even be able to see my crotch in this. <laughs> my phone now is freaking out, but I will not be stopped from saying what I have to say, which is that it's disgusting what's happening here on this planet. And my eyes have been open and my heart has been cracked open. And I realize, you know, how hard it is to feel the extent of it right and especially for people that are empathic which is like all the people I work with most of the people that I know um, 
and commune with are empathic and feel things and take on energy and well a lot of times we shut down because we don't want to because it can be totally overwhelming to feel the scope of what is happening right now like literally literally and this isn't like conspiracy or whatever we're on the break of apocalypse you know we have to do something now like and that's something that doing something is really changing us it takes a shift in our consciousness in order to shift what's going on here and part of that shift is embracing the environmental empathy and working with the interconnected of every interconnectedness of everything and the thing is is that we have to feel it and so I realized how hard it is um, one to want to do that <laughs> and then two to actually do it because we don't really have so many spaces where that can then be processed out and we don't take it on and hold it in and that makes us sick literally like dis-ease and illness come from not being able to accurately process what is happening to us and we're steeped in it. We're steeped in it because of the society we're in and because, because of the systems we're in. And they happen to be changing right now. That's the good news. They're imploding um, <laughs> and so might our planet unless we consciously make the shift and unless we consciously develop the tools and the training to really, really reconnect on deeper levels so that we can have the kind of awareness and we can have the kind of compassion that's needed to turn this whole thing around so eco grief eco anxiety it's real like people are feeling it and if we like you know by now that ignoring that something is happening does not make it go away <laughs> it doesn't solve the problem um so we need ways to understand it and not just intellectually, we need to understand it with our bodies, we need to understand it emotionally, um, we need to understand it intuitively. This isn't something that we are taught necessarily. Um, it's not something that's fostered and it's certainly not something that's encouraged by the society that's all geared towards making a profit and keeping people um, disillusioned and stuck and distracted right? from really feeling the scope of what's happening because if people did how Please tell me how we could continue to let what is going on on our planet continue to happen. We wouldn't be able to. And so with the fields of decay work that I'm doing, it's really going deep in. It's really feeling this and processing it and understanding it in new ways so we can have that environmental empathy and have it be something that is both healing for ourselves and also for the planet doing this work together with other people i found in community is so important whoa cut it out <laughs> we're not meant to do this alone we can't do it alone we're interdependent and interconnected there's no such thing as alone right so we need to come into community communities that know how to process the grief and the trauma that is already happened it's already happened and we and it continues to happen and unless we choose to do something it'll just it'll keep happening right so we need to be consciously the ones that are stopping the cycle and saying no to this destructive habits and patterns and creating new connections and new ways of being and new ways of relating so yeah and then like we get to bathe in the healing waters you know like when the planet is healthy we're healthy like the problems with our food like don't even get me started it's all like layered and it's all in the system and we have the power to change it we got to come from this heart place and we got to really connect and I don't just mean intellectually I can't stress that enough but anyway so I'm just gonna say real quick and then I'm gonna go is that part of this work I'm really excited to bring to my newest endeavor which I am calling the co-creation project and I'm taking a small group of like spirited people who really care, right? Who really want to embody and co-create something that arises from the compassion that we feel because, you know, it's also not enough, you know, just to have the intention. Um, it's intention plus action is actually the magic. It's actually what creates transformation. It's what creates change. Um, you know we have to align and really you know like walk our talk right 
Um, and that doesn't mean like buying into the overdoing thing and con continuing to like push ourselves and strive and succeed. It means doing things in a whole new way, doing them in community, in togetherness. And what can we create when we come from this new place where we're literally interconnected with all of the universe? The amount of wisdom that we'll be able to tap into will be something else. It'll be in the other plane. So yeah, so I'm doing this project. So if you're interested in this kind of work, email us at magic, M-A-G-I-C, at lobsterbird.com. And I'll tell you more about it later. But for now, you know, it's also about enjoying, you know, when we think about really connecting with the problems, it can seem heavy and it can seem sad, right? And it is on some levels. And then there's also so much freaking joy and so much beauty and so much pleasure to be found. And that's a part of this work too, is that it's joyful and that pleasure in this world and in our bodies and in our lives and in our work and in all these things is a radical act that like takes down the system. <laughs> they don't actually want us to, to enjoy, right? Because from that place of joy comes more abundance, comes more personal power, more connection, and it dismantles the system. So let us love life together. Let us love this glorious planet and place and oh, let's enjoy it and let's come together and co-create things that really, truly make a difference. Okay, I'm gonna go before I go. Just gonna make sure you got all this here on the hair Nazumi. I will not be stopped. I will record this on whatever device I can and have at my disposal. <laughs> put this all together and send it to you somehow. All right. I love you. Thank you for being here with me. Thank you for bathing in these waters. If you'd like right now, you could take a few really deep breaths and I'm, and I'm like sending you this energy, this clearing and cooling and joyous, abundant, magnificent energy. I love you. Enjoy this beautiful day, this life, and this moment that we have right now. Bye. <laughs>